What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm down at Randy Marion Chevrolet and we get to take a look at their 2021 Jeep Wrangler Sahara 4XE. So huge shout out to them for providing this SUV for me today. Make sure you guys check out their website. All that info is down in the description. The Sahara that you see behind me is finished off in black and it has a list price right around $60,000. And now moving on to what powers this 4XE. Underneath the hood, you'll find the two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine. This is paired with the 17 kilowatt lithium ion battery pack. It also has the eight speed automatic transmission and the engine alone pumps out 270 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. Combined, it pumps out 375 horsepower and 470 pound feet of torque. This has the full time four wheel drive system. It weighs in right around 5,100 pounds. It'll do zero to 60 in six seconds, up to its top speed of 110 miles an hour. It also has a fuel capacity of 17.2 gallons. You can expect to see around 20 miles per gallon, 49 miles per gallon on the combined mode, and then 21 miles on the pure electric range. This has a wheelbase of 118.4 inches. Its overall length is 188.4. It has a width of 73.8, a height of 73 and a half, its ground clearance measures in at 10.1 inches, and it also has an approach angle of 42 degrees, a breakover angle of 22 degrees, a departure angle of 35 degrees, and it can ford through 30 inches of water. And now working our way to the exterior for this Wrangler 4XE, we're gonna start off with the seven vertical slats that you see in the grill. Very traditional for the Jeep Wrangler. You can see all the cutouts as well to provide maximum cooling to this engine. And this model also has the optional LED lighting package. So you can see the LED headlights along with the LED DRLs. The LED turn signals are mounted over on the fender flares. And then this has the LED fog lights down in the body colored front bumper. You'll see the two tow hooks as well. We have the under skid plate there. And you can see a lot of these aftermarket tires. Definitely very cool. There's also a cutout between the bumper and the fender flare there just to see even more of the tire. Up on the hood, we have some subtle lines. There's also the bump stops too. So on the Wrangler, you can actually fold down the windshield. You can see those hinges there and you have a nice place to rest it. So that way it's not touching any of the hood, which is great to see. But we have a really beefy design for the front end with everything being body colored for the Sahara. Definitely gives it a great touch. As we work our way to the side now, you can see these 35 inch tires wrapping a 17 inch wheel. They're blacked out of course to match the rest of this theme. You'll also notice too that this has a Fox suspension kit. I believe it's around a three inch lift. So it gives it a great stance from the side. This also has the body colored side mirrors. And there's also three different roof options. This has the MySky roof, which is a one touch system. I'll show that later on in today's video. It's definitely the roof to go with. You can also see this has a set of running boards just to make it easier to enter and exit. And on the Wrangler, you can take the doors off. I won't be able to do that in today's review, but I'll link some videos down below if you'd like to see how that's done. And with the MySky roof option, you can actually remove the cargo panels on both sides. So there's two latches on the inside. And then from there, you can easily remove them. So with the sky roof open and the panels off, you can even have the doors on or off. It's a cool option to have. And then as we work our way to the rear, you'll see the full size spare mounted back here along with the backup camera. So you can still utilize that. This also has the LED tail lights. You can see those on both sides as well as the third brake light up top. We have the body colored rear bumper with all the integrated parking sensors. You can see the exhaust comes out over on the passenger side. And this has a towing capacity right around 3,500 pounds. But with the exterior wrapped up, let's work our way to the rear cargo area. So we do have this door that we have to open. You can see there's a button there, so you can lock and unlock this rear swing gate. And it does have a strut on it, so it makes it very easy to swing open. Even with that full size spare, it's not that heavy. And then from there, you can open up the glass the rest of the way and gain access to everything that you have in the rear cargo area. So there's definitely plenty of room. You can see a 12 volt. We have some tie downs, so that way you can secure any items. We also have the Alpine sub over on that passenger side. You can see some of the roll cage here. Everything is body colored, giving it a cool look. And then up underneath the floor, there is some hidden storage space where you could put any items down there that you'd like to. And then when you have the doors and the roof removed, even the windshield as well, you have a place to put all of these bolts so that way you don't lose them. And if you lift this up, you can see the spare tire changer kit and all of those accessories. So that is a really cool hidden place to have that. From here, we can just close down the window and then 
lock this into place. And again, it's very easy, even with that full size spare. And then on the inside of the door panel, you'll see there's really nice leather and stitching. There's also a net in the lower section where you can place any items that you'd like to. The release handle is up top. And then underneath the armrest, there's another grab handle. This makes it much easier to remove the door. So you have a place to grab. And then to disconnect all the electronics, you have this right here. You just remove this panel and then you can disconnect those, remove a few bolts and take that right off. And then at five foot 10, it's time to work my way in. We have the running board along with the grab handle. And with the front seat set at my height, you can see I have a little bit of room for my feet and my knees here. There's a little bit of storage space behind both front seats too. And we have a ton of headroom. I have around five or six inches above my head. Even with the roll bar here, you can see both of the speakers are up in the center. We have all the dome lights and the roll bar here basically surrounds the entire back seat area here. You definitely have a lot of headroom. You'll see right in the middle, we have the armrest where you have two cup holders if you need to use it. And these back seats also have a 60-40 split. So you can fold these down. In order to do that, you have to pull up the bottom first. And then from there, you can fold the seat down. And you can see with both of them down, it just gives you a little bit more versatility in being able to use this SUV. You'll see right in the middle, we have two air vents. We have the window controls along with a three-prong outlet and a few USB-Cs. You'll see there's a little bit of storage along with a little bit more just in front of that. So an ample amount of room for your backseat passengers. And then before we work our way to the front seats, this does have remote start. So on the key fob, you'll see lock and unlock. If I lock the vehicle, double tap on this button, it will automatically start up, which is a really cool feature. Now this being the 4XE, it is on and running right now. You just can't hear it. So you can tell because all the lights have turned on, but it is on and running. You can double tap this button if you'd like to shut it off. And then by unlocking it, we do have that button you can use on the door handle. You'll see the door panels finish off just like the rear. We have a lot more storage in the lower section along with that grab handle. We have lock and unlock along with the side mirror adjustments. And then just by removing this kick panel here is how you can disconnect those electronics. And then looking at these seats, we have the leather seats with all the brown accents. You can see a really nice insert running down them along with that diamond stitching on the bolsters. These are manual adjusting seats. So we had that slider bar up front to go forwards and backwards, of course. We had the height adjustment as well as your recline and incline. There's also the lumbar support with that dial in the front. We have a grab handle in the front as well. So it makes it very easy to enter and exit. And you'll see on the steering wheel, it's covered in solid black leather. We have more of that brown stitching along with some really cool trim pieces on each side. Now it's time to fire this up again. With my foot on the brake, we have that engine start stop button over on the right side. We can bring this back to life. Where you'll see on this gauge cluster, over on the left side is the tack as well as the engine temperature. On the right side, you can see the fuel gauge as well as your power level and your charge. And then right in the center, we have a lot more information that we can go through using these buttons over on the left side of the steering wheel. So you'll see we have Bluetooth and voice commands as well. Over on the right side is cruise control, the adaptive cruise and distance pacing. And then on the back side of the steering wheel, this also has volume and tuning. So that way you can adjust those as needed. And then working our way back to the center screen, currently you can see the hybrid information. So we have around 10 miles on the electric range, 123 miles for the gas. You can see those meters on both sides as well as your average MPG. You can also scroll down and look at your trip information, go to your audio, any messages that you may have. You can also go into the screen setup. So currently you can see the time in the upper left. We have the battery percentage in the upper right, and you can configure those just depending on what you'd like to see. You can also adjust the range and the average MPG, again, just depending on what you'd like to see. We can pull up the speedometer. You can also look at all of your vehicle information. So you have TPMS and all of these vitals that you can monitor as needed. You can look at your off-road, so you have your pitch and your roll, as well as the degrees for the steering wheel. So as I turn the wheel, of course, you can see that adjust. You can pull up the driver assistance so you can monitor that. And then we're back to this setting here. So it's nice to have all of that readily available. As we work our way to the left side of the steering wheel, down below, you'll see the fuel cap release. And then we have these three buttons right here. We have the hybrid, the electric, and the e-save. So the different driving modes, just depending on how you'd like to drive. We have the headlight and fog light adjustments, as well as some dimmer switches. You can see in the corner, we have one of the speakers. 
There's also a little bit of storage space in the center of the dash here. One more speaker. It's covered in leather with more of that stitching. And then below that, we have the giant 8.4 inch touchscreen system. There's a lot that you can go through with this system. And you have all these presets here that you can adjust. So you can see the music. We can go into the climate so you can adjust all of that from your temperature, where you'd like the air to go. You can even go into the heated seats and the heated steering wheel just by pushing on those icons. If we go into controls, it's another shortcut to get into here where we can also pull up the backup camera. So you can see that with the guidelines, definitely great graphics. You'll see there's different apps that you can go into. We have the off-road pages. You can go into your heated seats if you'd like to. We have the climates, other controls that you'd like to see. If we go into the off-road pages now, you'll see these diagrams pop up where you can see your steering angle as well as if you're in too high, four-wheel low, four-wheel high. You can go into the accessory gauges where you can monitor that information as well as the pitch and roll so you can see that in a little bit bigger of a view. So it's nice to have those. This also has navigation, so you can pull that up in full screen. We have phone, and then any settings that you'd like to go into, just to configure all of this as needed. So if you use the off-road pages icon a lot, you can actually drag and drop it and replace it down below, so that way you can quickly get to it. Really nice to see that. We also have this waterproof trim around it, so if you have the top down or the doors off, it will keep it better protected. You'll see below that we have all the climate control settings nicely laid out, along with power and volume for the radio. Tuning is over on the right side. We have the fan speed right in the center. You also have the front and rear defrosters, the heated steering wheel and heated seat controls. You can also push on this icon here. That is for the regeneration. So this does have the regenerative braking system, which is really cool to have. We also have the traction control, the parking sensors, and then this button here is for the off-road cruise control, basically. So you have to be in four low in order to use that. And then you can monitor downhill assist control. You can also monitor the speed that you'd like to go. And it goes well below one mile an hour. So it's a really nice system to have. You can also shut that upper screen off if you'd like to. And then working your way below that, you can see there's a 12 volt. We have all the window controls right in the middle. Over on this side, we have the media. So you can hook up your phone in the auxiliary or the USB and USB-C. You can run Apple CarPlay or Android Auto and using that. And then you'll see there's some more auxiliary buttons down below. So if you'd like to hook up exterior lighting, compressors, you have a factory location to put those. Really cool to see that. There's also a little bit of storage over on this left side. And then as we work our way to the shifter, if I put it into reverse, you'll see that backup camera up here again. You can go down into drive, pop it over into the manual setting so you can shift using this if you'd like to. And then to the left of that, you can see two high along with four high auto, four high part-time, and then four low. We have the manual parking brake to the left side of two cup holders. You have a little bit of space right in the middle. It's perfect for the key fob or even your phone. And then moving on to the center armrest now, you can see it's covered in leather and more stitching. And there's two different compartments here. We have a smaller one in the upper section, and then we have the normal one down below along with a USB. So you can put in any items down there that you'd like to. And then we have the glove box here with a lot more space. We'll take one last look at these seats. And like I mentioned earlier, this does have the MySky roof. So you can use this button here. Now you do have to go to just behind the headrest of the front seats before it will automatically fold back. So once we get to here, we can push on it again and it will go all the way back to behind the back seats. So it is a great roof option to have. You don't have to worry about where to store the hard top panels or even with the soft top doing that by hand. So you can see it provides a lot of light and then with one touch, we can bring that all the way back. So definitely a cool system. I would definitely opt for this roof. So that is pretty cool to see. And then up top, you'll also notice we have some assistance buttons and then the rear view mirror right in the middle. All right, so getting this Jeep Wrangler 4XE out on the road, I think I've heard people call it 4xE, but either way, this is the new hybrid electric version for the Jeep Wrangler. I think this is really neat. Just driving it around in the parking lot, I've had it in the electric mode, so it hasn't been using any of the gas, which I think is pretty cool, especially in a vehicle like this. It's not something you would technically or really expect to see in a Wrangler, but Jeep is coming out with the 392. They're putting superchargers in the V8s. Now they're going to this hybrid electric system, which again, I think is really cool. We have the different driving modes that I've showed earlier. So currently we are in hybrid. There's also electric and then the e-save. So electric mode saves fuel for later use. And then if I put it into the e-save, it saves the battery for later use. So with it in hybrid now, I believe that is the full horsepower and torque figures. Let's give it a little bit of gas. Now there was a slight
slight delay to that, but that's pretty quick. You don't hear any exhaust note whatsoever, so this is not a loud vehicle. If you're looking for that, go with the 392. You're gonna get all that V8 exhaust noise, uh, but that was pretty, pretty quick. <laughs> you can see that power meter go all the way up. Let's move it over into electric mode now. And before we give it another acceleration, we have some traffic in front of us. Just talking about the Wrangler in general, I used to own a Wrangler, so I have a lot of seat time behind the wheel of one. And aside from this power plant, everything else is virtually the same. If you see my other Wrangler reviews, everything is the same as far as the screen, all the buttons, the layout, taking the doors off, the MySky roof. This is a really capable off-roader, but it's also pretty comfortable for the road. Now we do have the solid front axle that's going to adapt to the road a little bit differently than an independent front suspension would, but that's just what you get in order to take this off-road, get all that articulation that you're looking for. But I enjoy driving mine out on the road. Now I wouldn't say this is much of a highway cruiser. I had mine out on the highway, it's a bit loud, but you know, that's what's to be, that's what is expected of this vehicle since you can take the doors and the roof off. Now that we are in electric mode. <laughs> you can definitely tell there's a difference between the hybrid and the electric there. And then if we push on the e-save, which says it saves the battery for later use, this should be all uh, gas now. Oh yeah. <laughs> Either way, this is quick. This is so cool because not only do you get a Jeep, Jeeps don't really have the best MPG, just depending on the model you go with, but in general, now this is a heavy model. This is 5,100 pounds. Well, obviously that's from the batteries and everything that is included in it. However, with that being said, you get some pretty good MPG. So if you want really the best of everything, you want the Jeep life, you want that off-roader, you want to take the doors, the roof off, and you want some good MPG, especially if this is your daily, I can't think of a better version to get. It's, it's going to be quiet as far as the engine and exhaust note goes. A little bit of wind noise here and there. Not to say that's a bad thing. I loved owning my Jeep. It's definitely fun. One thing that I did not have in my Jeep was the My Sky roof. The one touch here, I believe once you get past the headrest here, then you can have it automatic all the way back. I think this is the best roof option if you can find it. And if you want to spend a little bit more, it's two, three, maybe four grand more to get it. It's quick and easy to do. You don't have to worry about where you're going to store the roof panels or bring them with you. If it's gonna rain, you can quickly close it. And now as we switch over to the POV angle, you can see what it's like to be behind the wheel of the Wrangler in general. We have the largest screen option that you can get. All of these buttons are nicely laid out. I do like the size of these. If you have gloves on, it makes it very easy to use if you're driving this in the winter. All of the controls down below are nicely laid out too. And so now over on the side, we are back into the hybrid setting there. Being the electric system, all of your torque is pretty much instant. So the moment that you push on the gas pedal there, there is a slight delay, and I think that's in combination with the engine, but all of that torque is gonna be pretty much in the instant range. So if I go to electric now, give it some gas, <laughs> and we are up and moving. That is the electric, and then the last one, is the gas and we'll do that here once we get back out on the road as far as visibility goes for the wrangler it's very easy to see the pillar in the back is not all that bulky it's actually very 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 thin over my left shoulder it's easy to see and then even though we do have the full size spare on the back i can easily see around it and then going back to the overall ride with these 35 inch tires it's actually been pretty smooth. Now I will say hitting some of these bumps, the front axle, like I mentioned earlier, is going to adapt to them differently. There's that instant torque I was talking about with the electric range. It's really quick to go through all of these different modes too, since they're conveniently located right there. But yeah, this is fun. If, Like I mentioned earlier, if you want the best of everything, this is a pretty cool option to go with. 
you can still take this off road. So I'm assuming that even with the electric system, having all of that low end torque can still spin these tires. These are 35s on this truck and it's handling them well. So I wouldn't say that this is underpowered for larger tires. So that is definitely a plus. So I think that's gonna wrap it up for my walk around review and test drive, getting behind the wheel of this 2021 Jeep Wrangler Sahara 4XE. Once again, huge shout out to Randy Marion Chevrolet for providing this vehicle for me today. Check out their website, all that info is down below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a huge thumbs up and consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. I'll see you guys in the next video.